everyone. Today we're going to take a look at Lightroom's uh, stitching capabilities for panoramic shots. And I've collected a, a handful of shots that are both shot with a gimbal head and by doing some handheld. Can you shoot handheld panos? Absolutely. You just have to be careful. And because if you're not, you're going to lose a lot. So you want to back off a little bit on your zooms when you're shooting handheld. But if you're shooting with a, a, a panel head or a gimbal head like I use, then you can just shoot the entire scene and it's going to line up perfectly. However, Lightroom doesn't quite see it so, but let's just go through the options. So I'm going to start first with this one. This is just a, uh, a four shot of Black Canyon of the Gunnison. And what I typically like to do is to adjust an individual image first. So let's go in the develop module. And as I look at this, let's see, we've got some clouds that are pretty bright. Oh, do I want to open up a little bit more? Maybe I'm going to bring the whites down a little bit more and then just open up the exposure, something like that. And let's hide the information for now. And then I'm going to sync it to all the other shots in the panoramic stitch. Now the beauty of Lightroom is that you can do this before or after you do your stitch because when you do your stitch it remains a raw file. So I've got my four images collected here and I simply go up to photo, photo merge, panorama. So what it's going to do is generate a thumbnail and then there are a handful of options to take a look at. Now when you shoot handheld which this one was done. This was a real quick, I wanted to grab it for that person left. Uh, you can see you get all these, these images that don't quite line up exactly. And also Lightroom assumes that you're shooting handheld. So it adds this kind of sort of a scalloping effect uh, to, to straighten things out. But we'll, we'll, we're going to fix that. First of all, you have to decide a projection. I think probably 95% of the time you're going to want cylindrical. If you choose spherical, watch what happens. You can see it kind of compresses vertically. I've never seen a reason for doing that in my panos. There's also perspective, which can be really weird. So uh, generally for street scenes, if you're shooting down a long street, I find that works. Generally, cylindrical is where you're going to go. Now, down below here, you have the, a couple of different options that are very interesting. The first one is called Boundary Warp. And what Boundary Warp does is it takes all the image and it just drags it out to the corners. So if I take this all the way, there you go. Now, in this case, it actually works because all we're doing is, is maybe stretching some trees and some clouds. That's okay. Let's turn that off just to look at the other options again. We've got Auto Crop, which will take what you've got without doing any kind of stretching or adjusting. The problem with auto crop is if you're doing a handheld, notice how much of the bottom we cut off and it really isn't working. Uh, auto settings I never use because I've already adjusted my image and auto settings for me personally, most of the time it makes the image look worse. I mean, that's not right. So let's forget that. Uh, create stack, by the way, that is for when you're doing HDR panos. So like you have, oh, maybe two or three shots of each stitch that you're going to put together. So we're not going to address that today. There's also a new option here called fill edges. Now, unlike Photoshop, Lightroom doesn't technically have a content to wear fill, but when you use fill edges, it seems to all of a sudden come up with a a content to wear fill and it's actually pretty amazing and in this case that works really well for this particular image so now I can simply hit merge and Lightroom does its magic and you can see up creating a panorama up on the top and we'll get to see it in just a second now by the way I'm running a Mac Studio uh, M2 chip uh, with a lot of power in it you might find this stuff takes a little bit longer on your computer so here's our shot in fact, we can go hit F to go to full screen, let that draw in, and that looks pretty amazing. And that was just a handheld. So let's go back out of that. Let's take something a little bit more difficult to do. I've got a big stitch here. How many shots is this? Let's see. One, two, nine shots. All right, let's see how Lightroom handles this. So we're going to go again, photo, photo, merge, panorama. And it's going to take a little bit longer to generate the preview because, again, it's dealing with nine shots rather than the four we had on the previous one. All right, so here's this is typically what happens when you see a shot, shot handheld. You get these slightly wiggles no matter how careful you are. And if I hit crop, we're going to lose a lot of the sky. Let's take auto crop. And you can see there's just the sky's gone, so we're not going to use that. Uh, could we use boundary warp? Let's try that. 
and it works, but um, all of a sudden the mountain range is slightly tilted the wrong way because how it stretched it over on the left. Let's try uh, fill edges. Let's see how good a job Lightroom can do with that because I don't want to lose that sky. And can it pull this off? The answer is yes. Holy cow, that's pretty amazing. So let's go ahead and merge that one. And yes, this one's taking a little bit longer. It's nine images. In fact, I'm curious to see how big the file's gonna be when it's done. In fact, here it is. Here's our file. Let's hit the I button to see. This is now 17,486 pixels wide. Holy cow. If you printed this on a canvas, and canvas is only printed at 150 DPI, let me bring up my calculator here. 17486 divided by 150. That is an almost 10 foot wide print at 150 DPI. That's pretty cool. Now, again, the beauty is you can do your editing because it's still a raw file. Notice all the sliders are where they were for the before we composited the image. So, for example, I can bring up the crop tool. I think there's maybe a little too much bottom. I'm going to bring that up to about here. Also a little too much on the left. Let's bring this in a little bit. And oh, something like that. And then typically when I'm done, I'll go to effects. I'll add a minus 12. And also I want to bring out the mountains a little bit. So we're going to add a linear gradient. And I'm going to click from here and drag at the angle that follows the mountains. And what I'm going to do is add some dehaze to bring them out. It's a little bit hazy this morning. Actually, this is this is uh, is this sunset. Sunrise, sunset, I forget. I think this is sunset. Uh, so you see that brings a lot more contrast off into the distance. In fact, we'll add, a, no, I'm not going to add saturation. That makes the sky weird. Uh, I will bring it up brightness a little bit because dehaze does darken. And something like that. And you can see I cut it down. Now I only have 15,680 pixels. That's a lot of pixels. Let's take a look at that full screen. And that comes out. Pretty cool. All right, let's take a look and see what happens if you use a gimbal or a pano head. So I'm going to go over to some images that were shot with that kind of system. And we're going to take, oh, let's see. Let's use this one. This, this last one here is a beautiful scene, beautiful sunrise in Grand Teton. So here's one of the middle images. We've got this cloud stuck on the top of Grand Teton. Beautiful scene shot with a gimbal head. So I'm going to go to Photo, Photo Merge, Panorama. And even if you're shooting on a gimbal head, Lightroom doesn't know that. It still assumes that you are shooting handheld. So it does this scalloping thing again, which is unnecessary. In this case, the easiest answer is just go to Boundary Warp because these images are shot stitched very closely to perfect. And we'll take a look at the finished panel. And again, this is what? This is six frames. So this is still going to be a pretty big image. And we'll take a look and see how big this one is when we're done. And here's our stitched frame. Isn't that amazing? And we'll hit I. And this is 10,882 pixels. Again, still good for a really big print, like a six foot wide print. I don't know how many of you are going to be printing that large. And again, you can do your edits as you normally would. Let's take a look at this at full screen. Let that draw in. And maybe a little bit too much foreground. Yeah, let's, let's fix that. I can't let that go. So I'm going to hit the R key to bring up the crop tool. And let's just make it a little bit more panoramic feel. And I'll show you a couple other tricks I like to do. I'm going to go ahead and add again my minus 12 vignette. But to bring the viewer more to the center, I'm going to use a radial gradient, which is Shift M. And I'm going to do a long, thin gradient here, bring it into the middle, and I'm going to drag it kind of following the angle of the shoreline there. And I'm going to bring up the exposure a little bit. In fact, I'm going to bring up the saturation too. Let's bring that up as well while we're in here. And let's hit done and take a look at that full screen. And there you go, an absolutely amazing panorama. And this is a huge file, which means you can make a really big print out of this, should you feel so inclined. So that's just a, kind of an example of the beauty of doing 
panoramics in Lightroom. It is extremely easy. It's extremely flexible. If you do handheld, it can, it can fix a lot of errors. If you use a panoramic head like I used here, everything just lines up perfectly and you don't have to worry about any distortions or any stretching to fill the frame. So that's using Lightroom for creating panoramics. Hope that was helpful. Give it a try. It makes for great images. And I hope to see you online again soon. Till next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.